Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to look at scaling frame sizes in Adobe Premiere Pro and also how come when it scales, I still see the edges. All right, the first thing to understand is aspect ratio. Every single image, video, or any graphic has a horizontal and vertical size. What you're looking at here is 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080. Not everything has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. When you're shooting with a DSLR, it's not shooting as a 16 by 9 by default anyway. They're shooting at uh, something completely different and we're going to have a look at that. By the way, I'll do a future tutorial on this. I took some of these shots with this Russian Helios lens. It's pretty crazy. Okay, so I'm going to start by also showing you the um, set to frame size and scale to frame size, which I did in a previous tutorial, but there's been an update. When to use them, why to use them, and when they can screw up, and then how to change all of your images at one time. Let's go have a look. All right, so first of all, I have no sequence here. I'm going to create a new sequence so that we have something that is a basis to go by. So I'm going to choose 1080p, just this DSLR. I'll, I'll call this one HD. So we have an HD sequence. Now, if you take an image, this is a still image, and drop it on, um, this is straight from my Canon 5D Mark III. The image is gigantic. And when you right click, you'll have two choices. If you don't see these two choices, Time to upgrade to the newest version of Creative Cloud. Scale to frame size will scale this to frame size until one of the, the sizes meets. So if we look at this, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that the, the vertical orientation comes to the edge and then it stops. That's why you see your edges. What you're probably looking for is something called fill to frame size, which a Premiere Pro does not have. It will respect the size and not crop the image. Filling to frame size will respect the aspect ratio and keep scaling until we fill the edges. You know how to do that? Just change the scale, which we'll do in a second. But this is scale to frame size. And if we look over here at the scale, the scale is set at 100%. Well, didn't you just scale this and change this? Yes, we did. Scale to frame size is a checkbox setting. So if you look back in here, scale to frame size still has a check mark on it. This is as if you rasterize this larger image. So it's now, it's like you went into Photoshop and exported this out as an HD height, not necessarily a width. You kept the aspect ratio of the original, but you kept the height, which gave the outside edges. If you want to scale this to fill the screen, this is the wrong choice. Let's go turn that off. Scale the frame size, turn it off. Right click, set to frame size. It's going to do the exact same thing, but if we look over here in the scale, you can see it's at 28%. So if I click on the little motion and we zoom out now, we can see it's the exact same thing, but we can enlarge this. So let's go to 25% here. I'm going to click in here, a new update for Premiere Pro. If you click and use the up and down arrows, you can change this a little bit easier than the mouse. So you can see when I keep going up to 33.1%, it now fills the horizontal and vertical size. But look at those blue lines. That's chopped out. Premiere Pro just expects you never want to lose any part of your image. That's why it refuses to crop that part out. So set to frame size and then scale it further. But what if I had a lot of images and I wanted to do this to a lot of the images? Well, then both of those set and scale to frame size are useless. Let me show you what I would do instead. I've got my folder of JPEG images. I'll drag those in. They're all huge. And what I will do, if this is a quick job that I needed to change, I guess that is a little bit there, 34.1. That's the, the right. So if I really wanted to, to change all of those quickly and not have to save a preset, I just want to get this done right now, then I will select this, copy it, select the rest, paste attributes. It's already on motion. Click OK and do it that way. 
they're all scaled correctly. Now, obviously, here's a vertical shot that that number doesn't work anymore. That's my vertical shot going in here, and I'm trying to fit this in an HD frame. Well, I now have to enlarge this one even more to fit this. So this is a 50% frame, and if we zoom out again to 25%, you can see there's the scale, and I'm cropping that much out. So I need to pick where I'm going to crop this. And if I wanted to, I could pan this from top to bottom. But that is a different issue now on a vertical still image shot. So also, if you right click over here and choose save preset, then you could save these as presets. So maybe you're always shooting with the same DSLR and you're using HD and you realize your vertical shots always fill correctly at 50%. Save that as a preset, select all of them and drop them on. Okay, I'm not gonna show you all of this stuff because you can do it yourself. All right, so let's look at a brand new update in uh, Premiere Pro that allows you to set the, the set scale when you uh, drop it into the timeline. So in the preferences, in the edit menu on Windows, the Premiere Pro menu on the Mac, if you go to the media settings, the newest version of Premiere Pro has a new setting and that's default media scaling for two things. You can have it on for none, scale to frame size, or set to frame size. And if I choose set to frame size, click OK, I'll drag that on, and look at this. It's set to frame size automatically. There's no check mark for that, so you don't see set to frame size. What you do see is a percentage over here on the left-hand side. Let's go drop in a 6K red file. So I'll go to the end of my timeline. This is a 6K red file, drop it in. Oh, look, it's set to frame size automatically. So now my 6K red file comes in. And again, look at the aspect ratio. It's not 16 by nine. So if we look over here, the set to frame size was 31.3. And if I go up a little bit more, 34.3 on this 6K in an HD is the correct size. So like I said, if you do this more than, if, if you're gonna open any other project, and scale any media, you should be saving presets. And I'll have a, a tutorial here uh, where you can go watch making and saving presets so that you would always know, oh, 6K HD, drop it in, boom. And if I had 50 of them, when you drop in a preset over here on the left, it will scale automatically. Okay, so that is in the preferences. So you have those two choices scale to frame size, set to frame size, and by default, it's set to none. Well, why would someone use scale to frame size? A really good example is when you have larger high-res media that you don't wanna scale any further up. You wanna scale it into an HD frame or a smaller frame and just leave it. Um, that's what scale to frame size is. And, and a, a good thing would be graphics or titles that were uh, 1080p that you wanted into into 720p and it would scale those down. Here's the the thing you have to watch out for. I've created a comparison here. I brought in the 6K in two different ways. One is scale to frame size, one is set to frame size, and then I scaled it up from there to fill the screen with the balloonist here. So I could see some edges. I wanted some indication in the frame of when it was falling apart. And there's some great examples right here. Look here at this rope and look at the edge. That's a typical, I would call that a Photoshop style overscaling. You're blowing it out. Look at the flag over here. The stripes, you can see jagged edges. You can see jagged edges down in there. You can see jagged edges over here. Look on the left, it's not crystal clear by any means. It's still, I'm scaling it 200%, but look at the difference. Look at that rope, it's clean and smooth. Look at the lines in the flag, clean and smooth. This one on the left is set to frame size. This one is uh, scale to frame size. And if we look at each one of these, this, the set to frame size is scaled up 193, so almost 200% to fill that area. The scale to frame size, 
like again, this is an HD sequence. I dropped this in, it scaled it automatically, but I had to scale this up 637% to get it the same size. Now you wouldn't do that intentionally, but you might do that accidentally. Just thinking, oh yeah, the scale to frame size. This is the equivalent of taking the 6K red file, dropping it in an HD sequence, and then taking that nested sequence back in another HD sequence and scaling that up. Hopefully this is not too confusing, but I'm trying to alert you to all the different ways that you can really mess up here. Quite honestly, I never use scale to frame size. It doesn't mean that some people don't use them. At ABC in Hollywood, when I was down there training uh, with Christine Steele, ABC used scale to frame size for all of their HD graphics going into their 720p timeline. That's just the way it, it was a rule. They had that set in the preferences. But take a moment here while, while we're looking at this stuff and look at the, this uh, Helios lens. Look at that crazy lens flare going on and look at the, the bokeh in the back here. Look at that swirly, quirly, crazy stuff. So um, I'll do another tutorial where I'm showing you how uh, this lens uh, works and I've got it stuck on my 5D. It actually will stick on the uh, Blackmagic. It's just an EF mount adapter. Obviously they didn't make these Russian lenses for Canon or Blackmagic. There's just a little uh, cheap adapter on there. So, uh, Anyway, I digress. It's, it's a, a lot of fun using those. So, scale the frame size, set the frame size. Don't push things too far when you've got the scale to frame size checkbox on. And if you want to fill your edges, it's not set or scale to frame size. It's just a regular scale property that you have to manually change to fill the screen. All right, a lot to cover, I know, but uh, hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. You want to take your support up a notch? Join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.